the highlight of, of I would say, um, progress is, is uh, 2008 when 3IE uh, was created as a result of the When Will We Ever Learn report. Uh, there was hardly any impact evaluations. <laughs> And now, uh, you know, 12 years on in 3IE's repository, we have the evidence platform with over, um, you know, over 10,000 impact evaluations uh, that, you know, from, created from, from all sorts of institutions. Uh, and, and just to, and, and we're capturing more every year. So there's been, a, you know, a huge increase. One of the uh, areas I, th I think of important progress has, has been not just the sort of blossoming of actors in the ecosystem, but also the different centers and organizations and research groups that have that have um, cropped up have found uh, interesting sort of complementary ways to, to kind of push the field forward, to think about how can we ensure that we're also doing impact evaluation at scale and, and looking for uh, effects that, that we might not see at sort of smaller scale um, evaluation levels. I think that particularly the bilateral donors in the UN, I think have really understood and bought into the culture of evaluation and impact evaluation evidence, you know, and trying to use evidence. And I, that's a clear, you know, shift in thinking. Both agencies have very interesting approach, which is they wanted their funding to be endowment for the country to do something more. And they wanted the so-called uh, formal mechanism, ministries or, or public organization to set up this research mechanism as an independent body. So that has given us some, some time to experiment and to, to try to gather experiences. And the uh, Canadian CIDA uh, funding became the famous Thailand Development Research Institute, TDRI, which is the leading economic research institute in Thailand right now. A part of the Evidence-Based Policymaking Act is also to encourage agencies to put forward data catalogs and share data um, as much as possible. That is a big undertaking, and I really hope that changes and shifts the way that we work together uh, moving forward as a broader community. In Liberia, in the education, system, they were looking at whether they should contract private education providers, for example. But the test was, could the a private education provider provide better quality at the same level of per capita spending? And that is an interesting question, because that's something that the policymaker could act on. We normally think about it as, oh, we do a bunch of household surveys, and we do a baseline, and we come back five years later. But a question is like within these big systems that have so much administrative data but have individual identifiers, can we be using these methods to answer questions about how to do better with, you know, what we have? I think it's important for some organizations like JPAL to make sure we are pushing the edge of this knowledge. And that's why we added a firm sector and a gender sector and climate change. We just announced a big program on climate because you know, it's equally important for governments to understand what's the best mitigation strategy for rising sea levels or classrooms which are at 110 degrees Fahrenheit for four months of the year now. So you can't just announce a summer vacation for four months. You need to find a way to mitigate those things. The findings of that report caused us to pull down a couple in-process roads evaluation and recontract them. Um, like based on these findings. So not only are, are we learning how to do the programs better, we're, but we're also learning how to do our evaluative work better.